Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and it's lovely to be back with you. I've had a couple of weeks uh, away from filming and doing anything like this because I've been moving back from a winter spent in the UK back to the French house and getting settled in again to uh, life in France. So here we are and I've been working on my journal for April and you will recognise perhaps if you follow me on Instagram these two little images here because I did a doodle drawing video showing you how you could draw these plants. I'll provide a link to it up there in case you haven't seen it already and so today I thought I would show you through um, my journal plan for the month of April and I will also spin back to show you what drawings I did during March because there's quite a lot going on in March for me as well. So if you're new you're very welcome. If you've uh, visited before, if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. I also want to say a big thank you to everybody who's been uh, so supportive and left kind comments about the doodle drawings that I've been doing where I've been taking you step by step how you can draw different things including buildings and plant pots and things like this. Um, it's a bit of a departure for this channel so it's really good to know that I've got your support. And if you're looking for all sorts of other videos, maybe to do with journaling, making your own journals, how to use your own journals, please go and check out the playlists on the rest of my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm going to very quickly spin you back through the drawings that I did for March. If you saw my March planner video, you'll recognise these buildings. Uh, these were one of my doodle drawing uh, videos as well and I'll provide a link up there if you'd like to go and have a look at that. I'm working out what I need for my planner um, and it's not very much really. I like to um, have a note for goals, I like to know what dates, uh, days and dates there are for uh, the month that I'm working in and I also like to keep a, a record of the colours that I've maybe used to draw some of my images. And then I have a sort of what turns out to be a sort of a day-by-day -day diary. I've, I've got a little bit of um, semi-transparent paper over this just because some of these notes are now private. But the other thing that I did with this journal is I added more of my little buildings on this side of the page, which is my sort of planning page. This is my diary and, uh, you know, appointments. And this is my planning page. At the end of February, we went to the Scottish borders. I had uh, booked up to do a course to learn how to do this uh, copper work using soft soldering. And as part of the workshop, one of the first things that we had to do was do a design that would act as our base for the wreath that we would then make. So this is the design that I prepared and I will include a picture of uh, my final version of my wreath and you can see how they compare. But this was really great fun and if you're interested in this uh, it's run by a lady called Linda who has a shop and uh, a studio called Beasties Assemblage. It's in Jedburgh in uh, the Scottish Borders and I'll provide a link below this video along with all my other social media where you can find me particularly on Instagram. I'm posting fairly regularly on Instagram and I can bring you up to date with life in France as well as any artwork that I'm doing. I wanted a record of our trip up to Scotland, but I didn't necessarily want to write something down. I, I like to work more visually. So this is my representation of where we actually went. We crossed over the Scottish border, represented by the dotted line here. We visited Hoyk, Jedburgh Abbey, Kelso, Melrose Abbey, and, um, and then we came south again. We saw a lot of sheep and we saw a huge amount of snowdrops, which again, I've got reference to later on in this uh, journal. On the day that we left to go to Scotland, Russia invaded Ukraine and I wanted a way to mark that event so that I would remember it. And again, I chose a visual medium in order to do that. One of the key things that we noticed, apart from just how beautiful the Scottish borders are, is how much at this time of the year the banks beside the roads are filled with snowdrops. I mean, absolutely filled with them. There were just these big, white, clean clouds of snowdrops occupying any spare space they could find. And so that was something else that I wanted to represent in my journal. I have also included a gallery. I, I missed doing this the previous month because I completely forgot that I wanted to do it, but this time I did. And I've got four little photos there that represent what happened in the month for me. And then I decided that I would represent visually our return to France. So you can see us moving from the cloudy north of England and northern France all the way down south 
to just opposite Bordeaux, where we are based, represented by sunshine. And I hope that that sunshine continues. We are expecting minus five this weekend. It's sort of coming into the beginning of April. Um, so yeah, it's still jumper weather down here. So let me move you back to April. Now these two little images, if you're on Instagram or follow me there, you will already have seen. And I wanted to do more work with those potted plants. So I've created some shelves. Now the shelves are really simple. They're just two long rectangles and they're colored in a sort of a wood brown color. Um, and while I'm talking about color, let me tell you what pencils I use because I have had questions about that. I use these Polychromos Faber-Castell pencils. I have several of these, I have quite a big collection of these because Coloured pencils is kind of where I tend to start my colouring from. So I, I will, f this is my favourite medium in which to work. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Then I would go to watercolours and after that I would go to uh, alcohol markers. But these are my preferred way of working in my journal because although this is a very thick papered Archer and Olive book, and it is fabulous. The paper is so smooth. It's absolutely wonderful to work with. I did try using watercolours on one of my earlier images back in January, and I did find that the paper buckled, even though I was using very, very light water application. And I really don't want that. So for this journal, I'm going to focus on using coloured pencils. And for my black lines, I have two sizes that I use. I use an archival ink. This is Pigma Micron, and this is a 005. This is the finest one that I use if I want to add any details. And this is my outlining pen. This is a Micron 01. And they're both in black, and I use them an awful lot. I use them extensively. And they're what I will use to do any writing in my journal as well. One thing I do want to say about these images is I'm not an artist, I'm not an illustrator, I'm just like you, I'm just learning, I'm finding my way through this stuff, so if I can do it, you can do it as well. <laughs> do go and check out that video. So my planner for April um, includes my goals and my video diary. I, I do try to diarise when I'm going to do my videos, so it helps keep me on track. And then I have my month down here, and I've done a plant in a sort of a macrame pot. Uh, and some of the leaves are falling off. And this is just a way of playing around with some of those leafy images and pot images again. And then I have my very, very simple layout. So I've explained in the past that I did start trying to do calligraphy in previous journals, in previous years, and it just never quite looked right. I'm much happier doing a really simple, straightforward, handwritten font. And then down the side, I have the days represented just by their initial letter and the numbers for uh, the dates. And then I put in anything significant that I know is going on in that month. And then I added a little row of pots on this page, which is where I will make notes for things that I want to film, design ideas, and general ideas. And this can be recipes or garden ideas or whatever. And that is very, very basically my planner. And this is what I am finding is working really well for me. It doesn't need to be complicated. I don't have lots of things where I'm detailing a, a mood tracker or activity tracker or anything like that. I just need to know what's going on day to day and I need to have a place to drop in ideas so I don't forget them otherwise I have bits of paper lying around everywhere and if you're like me then this is a layout that would work for you as well very simple I've left the rest of this month completely blank and that's for drawing because part of the reason for uh, my journaling this year and, and to keep me on track is to make sure that I do lots and lots of drawing. That's been one of my sort of key aims for this year is draw more. I hope this very simple monthly layout appeals to you because sometimes it's easy to get drawn into the detail uh, one month when you've got a lot of time, you can sit and do all kinds of complicated boxes and track all sorts of things. I just find in real life, I don't have the time to do that. So that's why I work on a very simple basis. If this will encourage you to have a go at doing your own journaling, I would be delighted to hear from you and to hear how it's going. So do go and check out my little doodling videos. And until we meet again, stay safe and take care. <laughs>